Welcome to Shrimp Coverlet, where we wrestle the bigger picture out of literature. I am Adrian Fort. And I'm Dalton Gentry. And we are here for a short story review. Dalton, tell them what we're getting right now. This here, I don't believe either of us had read this before. No. Okay, good surprise here. This is The Lesson by Tony Cade Bambara. Yeah. And I enjoyed this. Do you have a rundown Thank for you. it? Uh, essentially, yeah. Excuse me, I wasn't prepared for a rundown. Uh, basically, we are looking at uh, what we would assume was a, a, a low-income, poverty-stricken group of children. Uh, and a professional, uh, Miss Moore, show, Moore, yeah. Moore, shows up and basically tries to take the kids under their, her wing and for show like, them a different life. For like a summer schooling type Like a thing. summer school yeah. type thing. The parents are all good with it. And it, this is also implied the African American children here. Uh, and they're being brought in and Miss Moore is trying to demonstrate to them basically social injustice. How if you want to get out of this, you have to work for this. Uh, and that's where we're led. They're taken to FAO Schwartz, a toy store, and that's that's what we got. I I would contend with one bit of what you said. I'm not sure the inclination was put in there that if you want to get out, you have to work for it. You don't think so? I think it's in there that the wealth needs to be redis- redistributed. Okay. Well, that will go. That's interpretation there. Okay. Uh, okay. So, like, give me some good things. What three um, good things do we have here? Three good things. Number one, the language, the sentence structure, and the voice are all fresh and surprising. Okay. Uh, you don't necessarily always get both of those things at the same time. When you do, it really makes an entire story run on all cylinders. Okay. Number two, this moves at a breakneck speed. It does. And three, this type of story is so much fun that there are still millions of, but there are still millions of things on display. Right? Okay. It's fun, but it's not just fun to be around. There's a lot of stuff going on in this story. I would agree with that. Uh, my first good thing is this story is absolutely real and it is absolutely alive today. It is a living story that is wonderful. Uh, there's a good uh, pain in here of trying to help someone and giving them the tools to help someone or to help themselves, but they have no ambition to help themselves. Right. They just won't, they just don't get it. Uh, and I, there's a good lesson in there, for lack of better pun. Uh, and while the writing isn't necessarily incredibly striking in this, the impact of this is. I, I think that's a good way of putting it. Uh, a couple bad things, though. Uh, three bad things. Number one, it is a bit self-indulgent. Okay. Number two, the shtick gets a bit old towards the end as far as the attitudes of the kids. Yes. Uh, and three, um, I want the story to be longer because I do like the characters involved. A lot of good characters in this. I, I, a lot of good characterization. It reads almost like Juno Diaz and George Saunders had a baby. Okay. Does that make sense? I, I could give you that. Okay. Uh, this is pretty cut and dry. I mean, it, it definitely, it, it immediately tries to conquer what it's going for here. Uh, there's not a lot of heavy quotable material in this. Do you have three bad things? Uh, these are my bad things. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, there's not a, hev- a lot of heavy quotable material in this. Like, I, I think in order to quote, you have to get a good length of things here. There's good things happening but there's not the very quick, good literary quote that I can just like put on a shirt. Okay. And that's the quote I like. Uh, and finally, the turn to realization in the end is almost just too quick. I, I think I wanted more length to it. Uh, it seems like some of the kids were just like, oh, and some were like, nope, not doing that. Yeah. And then it's over. All right. Uh, do you have some quotes in this you'd uh, like to read? The slap in the face of this story is the opening sentence. Okay. Back in the days when everyone was old and stupid or young and foolish and me and Sugar were the only ones just right, this lady moved on our block with nappy hair and proper speech and no makeup. That's a slap in the face, isn't it? Okay. It wakes you up. Yeah. You, you open a book that is uh, that looks like this. Big gray book that says literature, a portable anthology on it. You expect a lot of dusty sentences. You don't expect that. Okay. All right. Uh, do you have any more beyond that? Th- that's it. That's the only one I think I think that sums it up for me. I have a couple here that I really enjoyed. Uh, two short and then one that's a bit lengthy, but I, I like it. Uh, first of all, and the meter read uh, the meter reads eighty five cents, and I'm stalling to figure out the tip. And sugar says says uh, and sugar say give him a dime, and I decide he don't need it as bad as I do. So later for him good point there uh then miss moore asked what it costs so we all jammed to the window smudging it up and the price tag say three hundred dollars so then she asked how long it take for big button june bugs save their allowances too long i say yeah sugar outgrown it by that time 
And Ms. Moore say no, you never outgrow learning instruments. So we get the uh, contrast here between the two. Yeah. And finally, if I may read for the next year. Wait. You may. Okay. I'm thinking about this tricky toy I saw in the store. A clown that somersaults on a bar and then does chin-ups just because just you yank lightly at his leg. Cost $35. I could see me asking my mother for a $35 birthday clown. You want a who that costs what, she say, cocking her head to the side to get a better view of the hole in my head? $35 could buy new bunk beds for Junior and Gretchen's boy. $35 and the whole household could go visit Granddaddy Nelson in the country. $35 would pay the rent and the piano bill, too. Who are these people that spend that much for performing clowns and $1,000 for toy sailboats? What kind of work they do and how they live and how come we ain't in on it? Where we are is who we are, Miss Moore always pointing out, but it don't necessarily have to be that way. She always adds then, she always adds, then waits for somebody to say that poor people have to wake up and demand their share of the pie. And don't none of us know what, what kind of pie she's talking about in the first damn place. But she ain't so smart, because I still got her $4 from the taxi, and she sure ain't getting it. Messing up my day with this shit. Sugar nudges me. N sugar nudges me in my pocket and winks. That sums it up to me. It was an awful big math lesson, though, wasn't it? It was, wasn't it? Doing a lot of math there in a very sneaky fashion from Miss Moore. It was. Well done on her. Uh, where would you like to start with this one here? Because um, uh, I, I really enjoyed this, so. Do you have any place you would like to start? Um... I think if we wanted to look at this, this was published in 1972. Yes. So, 50 years ago? 40 years ago? 40, 50? 40. Math is terrible. I'm terrible. Anyway, this is just as powerful then as it is now. This is a living piece. This is wholeheartedly a completely realistic situation that could very well happen now. Uh, and I think... In order to write something that remains viable and it remains living throughout time, that's an accomplishment. Well, and you, you also have to have, um, you have to have timeless people. Okay. Archetypes of people that always have existed and always will. What is what is Miss Moore? Miss Moore? Moore, above all, I believe, is the dignity keeper. Okay. Um, do you know what I mean by that? Uh, explain yourself. So I, I, I dated a woman, and she was her family's dignity keeper. Okay. She And she'll kill me if she sees this. But she was prim and proper. Okay. Not necessarily prissy, but... She wanted to wear dresses because women wear dresses. Okay. She wanted to paint her toenails because women paint their toenails. And I remember she, extreme hatred of flatulence. Okay. And I went over to her house one time to spend the night. And she lived with her mother and her younger sister and her stepfather. And um, we're sitting there. I think we're playing a board game or something. And her mother lets one rip. Well... I'm sort of, I was sort of the dignity keeper for a little while with my family, so I know the predicament she's in. But I'm not the dignity keeper for her family, so I get to comment. Her mother lets one rip. I say, I didn't know you lived next to the train stations. <laughs> you know? Um, and she was petrified. Lord, yep. Yeah. So later on, her, her younger sister, who was an athlete, um, is making some joke about something, and she, says, she tells her sister, touch my butt, see how hard my butt's getting. So... The woman I was dating touched her butt, and she flatulated on her hand. Okay. So, the dignity keeper is someone who takes the societal standard and says, we here... She paints that picture. We here can do that. Okay. You don't have to look down on us, and you will not, because I am here as the dignity keeper... And we're going to spread a little bit of this. Miss Moore is a dignity keeper. She moves into this. Um, she moves into this uh, neighborhood, and she says, "You know what? Why don't we have some summer lessons? Because these children are getting a subpar education where they're from. Okay. And we're going to make things better for them." She says to these kids, "Look, things aren't fair." Someone has to institute change. 
and no one's going to do it if you don't speak up for yourselves, right? Okay. Miss Moore is a dignity keeper. This piece is timeless because those people always exist. Do you know what I mean now by dignity okay, keeper? I, I got you there. Uh, we do date incredibly different women, but I, <laughs> we're on the same page here. Uh, uh, this is, Miss Moore is attempting to discuss a sense of in inequality, basically. Uh, a difference that sh the gap should be bridged between things. And that is necessary. You need someone in your life who can do that whether you know that person personally or not. There has to be someone who is willing to say, uh, you can do better. This isn't right, and we shouldn't have this. But you could have this if you wanted this, if you wanted to work for this. But is it necessary? It's a difficult conversation to have. It is. And it was an incredibly difficult conversation for Ms. Moore, considering her audience. Right. But is it a necessary conversation? Absolutely, in my opinion. Yeah, and these kids don't seem receptive to it. No, especially the uh, speaker of our novel here, or of our short story. Uh, I, I don't know if I exactly got her name. Oh, it's written mentioned down. once, and it's mentioned very near the end. Sylvia. Sylvia. Uh, for Sylvia here, who is basically narrating this for us, uh, she is completely unreceptive. This goes over her. She's completely unreceptive, but she still falls into the trap. Doesn't yes. She? Yes. And that's the genius here of Miss Moore, is she's been able to plant that seed, even though it hasn't blossomed yet. Well, she's able to... She's able to undermine their wants and expectations and implant her lessons through, basically, inception. Okay. Right? She's planting these ideas in them. And, and you, see, you see her working sometimes... You don't see her working when Sylvia starts doing the math in her head, do you? Okay. She says something and Sylvia starts saying, 35 bucks. 35, 35 bucks buys this. 35 bucks buys that. 35 bucks will do this. Yes. But 35 bucks and my mother would say, you're an idiot. So that seed is planted, but in the end, she's like, well, I still got that $4. And what is she doing there? She's doing math with what she can buy with that, isn't she? Yes. So, so that it's $4 there. Dollar lesson... That four dollars from Miss Moore bought her a lesson plan for Sylvia. Okay, uh, it's still so there, but it's not actualized yet. It's not. Well, she's. It's going to be because exactly. that girl's going That's to go hope. spend that That's five dollars. Um, so I had a I had a an ethics professor who said that a lottery ticket is the best investment you can make. Not because you're going to win. Okay. Because you're not. But what it does is, A, it gives you hours of entertainment because you think about what you what would you do okay. if you did one. B, it is an ethics uh, lesson because you're sitting there thinking, you know, my brother-in-law is a real son of a bitch. I'd Fair. give him a little bit of money, but just enough to ruin his life. What would you do would with his I, money? You know? Okay. And C, three or C, I don't remember what I was doing, letters or numbers. But third, it's a math lesson. Okay. Because you start thinking how you would divvy up that money. Exactly. How much am I going to get cut on on taxes? That is exactly what's going on here. Interesting. That's actually a really interesting point. I, I kind of like that. That's brilliant. Now, if you, you want to talk about brilliance. That's what she's doing there, right? That's what yeah. Ms. Moore is doing here. Uh, subversion. She is subversively making these children more intelligent, right? Or not more educated, not more intelligent. Because we get the... There's a dichotomy here between education and intelligence, Okay. These these kids are super quick, right? Okay. They're just not educated. They're they're very bright. They've learned an entire additional language to the language they have to use in school. Okay. But they're not educated. Now, do you know anything about Tony Cade Bambara? I do not. I did not either. Okay. So after reading this and being so impressed, I googled her. One of the first things that pops up, apparently she was very quotable. One of the quotes from Tony K. Bambara reads as such, The job of a writer is to make revolution irresistible. Okay. Basically, what that's saying is to implant the idea of revolution. Okay. Now, this implants in you the idea of all of this economic unrest and uh, economic uncertainty and uh, inequality, right? Yes. Miss Moore's doing the same thing to the characters in here. Yes. Uh, that is She's a, implanting the idea of revolution in them. The idea of that, and especially, I, I would assume this would be published right about the time of the Harlem Renaissance, things like that. Uh, am I correct on that? Langston Hughes era? In 1972? Am I way off here? You're pretty far off. It feels, it has that same feel to it. 
where there's this idea of inequality and there should not be. We need to do better, we need to do something to get rid of this inequality between peoples. Uh, and that's a great thing, I'm all for it. I think that it kind of coincides well here. But, if you look at the other side of this, you can give someone the tools to better themselves. You can give someone the tools to make these educated decisions but you can't force them to do so. Right. Um, uh, and I think what, that's a big part of this here. What, what you can do is you can, you can give someone not quite an accidental... So Langston Hughes was the 20s. I don't know if that's what you're looking for. Okay. Um, you can give someone not accidental clues, um, but you can... Like what she's doing is she's using Inception here, essentially to plant revolution in their minds. Okay. And she's doing that by, by strengthening them as individuals, by strengthening their tools, by giving further education to kids. So to, to kids that are very observant, right? And um, highly observant people are often game changers due to intelligence if they are allowed circumstance, right? All right. So, especially Sylvia in this story, she's very observant. She is able to recognize and diagnose things that are going on. So, if she were to have the tools afforded to, to someone from a higher class area, she would be able to, to make, these, make things happen, make changes happen. And that's the hope, right? Absolutely. Um, I think it is interesting here, and maybe this is just because like, we've been on this weird theme lately of like parenting. Um, it is mentioned very early in this novel that Miss Moore doesn't fit in. She's not blood. She's nobody's relative. She's just there. But the parents wholeheartedly trust her to take the kids to go do this. The parents see the good in this. The parents see the benefit of this. And the parents want their children to have better than they had. So by all means, Miss Moore, please take our kids. Please give them that education you've received. So I think it's interesting that although the kids aren't grasping it yet, what's going on with this, the parents knew the outcome. And the parents are trying to make the best for their kids, trying to give them all the opportunities they deserve. Okay. So I think that's a pretty interesting little point right there, if you just catch that. Um, anything else you want to talk about on this here? You know, I, I think it. I think this, this story is so streamlined okay. that there's, there's a million things to observe here. I'm not sure what comment I can make on it. It's pretty clean. I think it achieves what it wants to achieve. What would you rate the lesson? I would give this 91 crazy white people out of 100. Okay, I gave it 90 sailboats, so I think we're all on the same page here. Uh, clearly above average, superior piece. Good piece. Yeah. What would you recommend? I would recommend The Type of Light That Shines on Texas by Reginald McKnight. Okay. Because it is a story set in an educational, um, set in a school. This is set in a, a summer school. It is a story that deals very heavily with race and what it means to be black in America. Okay. Uh, and it is a story where people are known by nicknames. It is a story where um, lessons are learned in sort of a subversive fashion. It's, it's, a, it's a story that provides a lot of, a lot of these same types of things. Okay. And it's, it's striking to see things like that. Right? Okay. Uh, I suggested Theme for English Bee by Langston Hughes. Which, by the way, you son of a bitch, 20 year difference between the publication of these two here. Uh, okay, that, that's fine. You can, look at, you, can look at the, you can look at the length of Langston Hughes' relevance okay. if you want to. But anyway, I, I think there are some good coinciding lessons here. What it's like, like you said, to be black in America is a very poignant in both of these here. Also essentially 25 years. And that idea of uh, a revolution. The inequality is there and something needs to be done. Something needs to be better through this. Comes through out of both, uh, both of them. Yep. Anyway, that's what I got. You want to yeah. wrap us up here? Um, if you like this sort of thing, maybe hit the like button. Maybe subscribe if you have not. Uh, and maybe leave comments down below if you have read any more Taney, Tony Cade Bambara. Because this was eye-opening and really good. And I am looking forward to reading more of more of her work in the future.
goddamn cicadas. <laughs> Loud as fuck, man. I know that's picking up. We go 